I'm just watching my YouTube monitor back here to see when the stream starts. And it looks like the stream is up. All right. You can bring me in. So good evening, everyone. We have 24 people participating in the Zoom room this evening. I'm so happy to have you here. Um, we are uh, <laughs> pioneers in this. We, we don't know what we're doing, so it, it may look like a train wreck at certain points, but uh, so happy to have you here. Uh, the purpose, uh, we're trying to teach the uh, Amateur Extra uh, class, uh, the information that you will need uh, to pass your exam in order to get your amateur extra ham radio license uh, as issued from the FCC. So, hi, I'm Gary, Whiskey for Echo Echo Yankee, as we would say, uh, and I'm going to um, uh, be with you here at the start to tell you a little bit about uh, uh, things that are going on uh, in the class. Tonight is an introductory session. Uh, we will not be covering any test questions tonight, so don't be disappointed about that. Um, the test questions actually start in Chapter 2, um, and um, so this kind of corresponds to Chapter 1 in the book. The book we're talking about is the American Radio Relay League Extra Class License Manual, 12th edition. Uh, so this is the book that you want to get, the 12th edition. Um, this covers the question pool that started uh, beginning July 1st of this year. Um, and you can find this book on Amazon um, or uh, from the American Radio Relay League is, uh, directly, and many bookstores uh, have it as well. So um, let's get started. Uh, um, Doug, if you'd uh, put up my PowerPoint, please. Thank you. So, yep, the introduction. That's what we're doing tonight. Um, a little bit uh, about me and then a little bit about Dave. We'll bring him in here and then I'd like to hear just a little bit uh, uh, from all of you. So, um, my name, uh, Gary Wise, uh, born and raised in Midland, Michigan. Uh, was interested in electronics uh, back in high school. I had the great uh, benefit of um, having electronics taught for two years at the high school level. So every day in high school I got uh, two hours of electronics training. Uh, very blessed at that. First licensed uh, in 1969 uh, while I was in junior high school. Uh, Whiskey November 8, Gulf Alpha Juliet was my call. Uh, but uh, high school came along, I got involved in a lot of other things and I let the license lapse. Uh, but uh, always was a shortwave listener, always was interested in electronics and broadcasting. Um, got a degree in broadcasting from Central Michigan University. Uh, went to work in uh, commercial radio and television. Uh, still with an interest uh, in, in radio. And uh, it was at a TV station in Saginaw, Michigan that uh, working on the engineering staff, most of the other engineers there were hams. And they said, Gary, you should go back and get your license. Well, that's a good idea. So I studied, 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 went into the Red Cross building in Saginaw, Michigan. I walked in with no license, walked out with an advanced class license. Not bad. Um, but uh, I had a, a lot going for me, and I'm, I'm very lucky in that regard. Uh, a little bit later, I was able to study up for the 20-word-per-minute code uh, and then uh, get to the uh, uh, extra class uh, level. Um, Ham radio has been so instrumental in my life um, in that um, it actually um, set my career. Um, I worked for 20 years for the Voice of America, uh, stationed overseas at overseas transmitting stations, uh, broadcasting on shortwave radio frequencies, uh, America's uh, story, telling America's story to the world by radio. That was our mission. Um, so. Ham radio um, has really um, been so beneficial to me, and uh, teaching these classes is my way of uh, giving back. Um, really uh, so happy to do that. So that's a little bit of my story. Um, you'll hear more about me as, as we go along. Let's bring Dave in here. I'm going to slide my chair over and uh, have him get in. And uh, Dave, if you'd pick up uh, the microphone number two. And uh, Doug, you can kill my mic and uh, let... Uh Dave, come on in here. You might have to kneel down a little might bit. Might have to s kind of slink down a bit. Okay, here we go. All right, I, I think you can see me. Is our audio good back there? Okay, awesome. Yeah, I'm Dave, Dave Ivey, K-E-4-E-A. And uh, I got started, I think, at the same time you did, Gary, with, uh, it was uh, the 
late mid to late 60s. I started out as a novice and then went to um, general. It was the 13 word code speed at the time and then up, up to advanced over about a three or four year period um, and was, was active back then. And then life happened, uh, got married, had a family and uh, my license elapsed. And it wasn't until like 2017 that I got back into it again and uh, tested right up to extra. I wasn't even aware that the code requirement was gone at that time. So that, that was kind of a pleasant thing. Uh, Career-wise, I've really been in electronics my whole life. I got started out in junior high uh, in ham radio, of course. And then I worked uh, during high school in a two-way radio repair shop in Nina, Wisconsin. Um, commercial two-way radio, police, fire, that sort of thing. And that launched me into a career in uh, with Motorola. I was with Motorola for 30 years and had probably three or four wonderful careers there. I uh, was privileged to turn up probably the first 25 or 30 cellular systems all over the United States, was involved with their data communications and um, ended my career with Motorola in the IT department as uh, they were downsizing. And uh, about that time, we decided to move to South Carolina and I ended my overall career with Kemet Electronics in uh, Simpsonville, South Carolina. So I've been retired for about two years now. So I'm learning how to do that and enjoying it thoroughly. Uh, I'm mostly involved with digital, uh, a lot of FT8, uh, also involved with Soda, Summits on the Air, which I found to be a great deal of fun. Just been doing some chasing lately for people who are, are on the summits. And of course, uh, I think this is the fourth time we're teaching the extra, mm -hmm. uh, first time with a new question pool. So uh, Gary wrote me in and I've, I've been very thankful to be a, be a part of all of this. So you'll be hearing a lot uh, more from me. I'll have a little module uh, when we finish the introductions and after Gary finishes his portion, and then we'll be continuing that in, in coming weeks. So that's, that's my story. Okay. Thank you, Dave. So if you don't mind, um, we've got 26 participants in the Zoom room. This could go all night. We want, don't want to do that. But I would like to hear a little bit uh, from uh, each of you in turn maybe uh, about um, your ham radio career or where you are located or just a, a short snippet uh, so we can uh, get to know you a little bit better. So I'm going to go in order of the uh, Zoom participant screen that's in front of me. Uh, so somebody is ad identified as John124. Uh, so uh, whoever that might be, if you would unmute yourself, okay, and uh, come on in. Forget Gary. Oh, there you are. Uh, John Hoyle. Uh, I'm getting into amateur radio very late in life. Uh, I'm taking this course at age 77, so I'm hoping that Gary and Dave can teach an old dog some new tricks. I was a hospital administrator for 31 years and then worked for the federal government as a public health advisor for 13. And uh, I'm here in the class and uh, Dave and uh, Gary got me through uh, technician in general, and I'm hoping they'll get me through this time uh, on uh, Amateur Extra. Thank you. All right. Thank you, John. Appreciate it very much. And you can go ahead and mute yourself again. Next on the list is Anna. Uh, Anna, come on in and just say hi. Hey, guys. How's it going? Uh, name is Anna Gutworth. I'm in York, South Carolina. Um, still working. I'm a master technician at a Meineke in Rock Hill, South Carolina. I've uh, been a ham since, oh gosh, the early 90s, and been a general for a really long time. I've gotten more and more into DXing and decided it'd be really nice to have the rest of the frequency privileges. And I've been studying for extra on my own and heard you guys are doing this class and just really happy to be involved. Super. Thank you so much. Excellent. All right. You can mute yourself if you would. And uh, Barry Millsaps, come on in. Uh, unmute yourself. Well, like, hello everybody, uh, Barry Millsaps. I uh, worked 41 years for Duke Energy in the nuclear business. Uh, started my ham career in June of this year. Uh, got my technician. I decided I was huddled in my basement during the tornado. And so I decided to get my technician license along with that. And then a month later, I went for my general and got it. And so Gary and I just had a chance meeting on the radio one afternoon. He said we were having a class for extra. So I signed up for this and was looking forward to it. Super, Barry. Thank you so much. Uh, Betsy, you want to come on in and say hello? Got to find that pesky mute button. There you go. 
Oh, Betsy, your audio is really low. We can barely hear you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll hear from you later sometime, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to work on that one. Appreciate it very much. All right, now we're going to go to the Bills. Uh, Bill Turner, uh, you're up first. Come on in. My audio is probably very low as well. No, it's really good. Oh, surprise, surprise. It took me several hours to get it to this point. Professionally, I was a computer programmer, uh, you name it, in computers. In the early 60s, uh, I was involved with a number of amateur radio groups that provided uh, emergency communication type uh, uh, events. was not able to get my own license uh, because of Morse code requirement. I have a 10 year that uh, solid frequency tones disappear after a few minutes. So it was very difficult to get uh, past the Morse code. Got my license in the 70s, still involved in uh, emergency communications, and I enjoy playing with uh, uh, digital. Super duper. Very good. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate it. And now over to the other Bill, Bill Whalen in Chicago. Come on in. Yes, hello, everybody. Bill Whelan, Long E. Um, I'm in Chicago now, but I was born and raised in Long Island. I got my novice license in 1958, believe it or not. My first contact with CW with a man in a boat off the coast of Ireland. So I still remember that uh, transmission and that, that CUSO uh, a great deal. I, was, uh, I worked for Motorola for 30 years in their marketing group and moved to uh, Schaumburg by the sea, so to speak. Um, probably about 15 years or so ago, fell in love with the Midwest and have been here ever since. Reactivated as a ham a number of years ago, five or six years ago, and took the general license. Now I decided to step up to the big door. So here we are. Nice to meet you all. Super, Bill. Thank you so much. And um, Bob Garn, can you unmute and just say hello? Oh, and you're going to have to put up with my dogs in the background. Hi, Bob. Oh, can you hear me? Hear you just fine. All right, I'm Bob Garn. I'm in Augusta, Georgia. I've uh, been a general for a couple of years now and a technician probably probably 10 years before that. Saw your email for the extra class through our local club and figured it'd be something worth getting into. So here I am. Super. Thank you so much. Great. Well, you can go ahead and then unmute yourself. And Brian, uh, KN4YWW, uh, come on in. Hey, good evening, Gary. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, Gary, um, for myself, it actually started about 10 years ago. A childhood friend of mine sent me a, one of these Chinese radios. I get a random package from Amazon. Um, then uh, we kind of talked about it and everything. And then uh, after about three or four hurricanes, um, decided I'd go ahead and get my license. So I got my tech last year. Uh, just did my general, actually, a couple months ago. And uh, just kind of a thirst for knowledge. Um, I live down here in southeast Florida, right, right on the coast. And... Um, yeah, so as you know, Aries and all that, we, we play a pretty big role. So uh, that's pretty much about me. Super. Thanks so much, Brian. And Calvin Long, your turn is next. Come on in, unmute yourself, and say hello. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Calvin Long. I'm just outside of Columbus, Ohio. I've been a ham since I, it was 90 or 91, I'm sorry, I, I should remember that, but uh, it was right after they instituted the no-code technician, and funny story is, is that I went ahead and got the no-code technician, and I could, um, I learned how to receive five words a minute, uh, like the year after that, but I was married and we had a family and I didn't let my lap uh, license lapse, but I stayed inactive until 2018 when I got active again and uh, I got my general at the uh, Dayton Hamvention in 2018 and I've been active ever since. Super. Thank you. Well, great to have you on board. Let's move now to uh, Charlie Foster. Come on in. 
Well, hello, everybody. I, uh, I guess I'm long retired now since 93. I spent 40 years uh, teaching industrial arts or shop or whatever you want to call it and math and then becoming a, uh, God forbid, junior high school principal and uh, retired from that position. I uh, got my tech when my wife and I were going back and forth to Arizona, and they were uh, pretty nice to outsiders or snowbirds. And so I was invited, got my tech plus with that Morse code part. Came back here to Michigan, and after we sold that place, I was no longer in messing with uh, ham radio. Uh, now, because of my age and everything, my sons, both of them uh, in their 50s, well, one's in his 60s, Says, ah, Dad, you're too old. Well, I, I'm here now to prove that they're darn wrong. So you guys got a lot of support, and that I know you're going to do for me. Thanks, thanks a lot. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll do it for you, Charlie, no problem. And Chris, come on in. Hi. Uh, I'm, I'm Chris Lowry. I live uh, just north of Buffalo, New York, and uh, I got my first license in the mid-'90s, I guess. And a few years ago in the winter, I needed something to do, so I got my general license, and I'm expecting this year is going to be another cold winter, so I decided this would be a good thing for me to do over the winter, so that's why I'm here. Great, Chris. Great to have you aboard. Uh, and uh, Doug Tucker, come on in. All right. Hello. I'm Doug Tucker from Chicago, Illinois area, and I've been interested in ham radio since I was a kid. I never had the opportunity to get licensed or just never actually took the step. Um, more recently, I'm a scout leader, and I'm very interested in emergency preparedness and communication. So this year, I decided it's time to just move forward. And I found Gary and Dave's course on YouTube, and I went through that. And with um, plenty of study, I, I completed and earned my technician and general a few months ago. And a friend of mine recently earned his extra. and said, hey, Doug, what are you, what are you doing down there at, at general level? So uh, I, he inspired me to do the same, and I'm looking forward to being able to use more more opportunities and frequencies. Thank you, Doug. Great, great to have you aboard. All right, and here's my neighbor and a good friend uh, from uh, Easley, South Carolina, Fletch. Uh, if you can push the unmute button there, come on in. Oh, uh, good evening, friends. Can you hear me? We hear you just fine, Fletch. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, we hear you fine. Good. Uh, I am uh, 82. I'm 82 and paralyzed for six years. I got my M ticket in 1955, and uh, I've been an uh, active ham off and on since then as a general. Uh, uh, my current challenge is to keep my brain operating and to get my uh, extra class while I still have time. We're going to get you there, Fletch, absolutely. And Fletch has actually attended uh, classes uh, with us in person. So um, uh, great to have you aboard here, uh, virtually here. All right, let's move to uh, Greg Smith. Greg, come on in. Got to find the unmute button. No, we can't hear you. You're still muted, Greg. There you go. Okay, how about now? Yeah. Yeah, my yeah my phone's acting stupid. Uh, but uh, anyway, I'm Greg, N8PPZ. Uh, was one of the original uh, no-code techs when they first came out with the no-code. Uh, then moved up to Tech Plus. Uh, then they dropped the 13-word-a-minute uh, general uh, for general. Uh, then I've been terminal at general ever since. Um, so I'm not very good at, at trying to study on my own. So I've been trying, you know, off and on trying to, to do the extra and uh, have uh, have had not much success uh, uh, doing that. Um, I live in uh, Aiken, South Carolina, so. Uh, I guess Chris, we're kind of neighbors there across the river. So, <laughs> but uh, uh, currently driving a semi truck, but that's going to change here next week. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I, uh, my inverter died. I had my laptop all ready to go, and uh, 
had the, my inverter and uh, everything, and I guess my laptop uh, was just too powerful for it, and uh, it bit the big one, so I'm having to use my phone. Well, great to have you uh, with us, however you got here. I uh, appreciate it very much. All right, let's move over to uh, Jack Stewart. Uh, you're up next, if you would unmute uh, and just say hey. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, I'm an aircraft mechanic. I originally got licensed uh, as a technician in 2014. Uh, I did my general this year, and I'm excited to uh, do the extra class when we're done with this course. Very good. Excellent. Well, great to have you aboard. Now it's up to Jim uh, in Missouri, I believe. Come on in, Jim. Hi, my name is Jim Berkshire. I'm a paramedic. Um, really interested in uh, ham radio all my life. Um, never really got to get into it. In 2011, I was forcibly retired after an auto accident, so it's a perfect time to get into amateur radio. Uh, been learning Morse code, and I really don't want to have to figure out what frequency I'm on, so I really want to get my extra. Very good, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> for for lazy people like us, we don't have to you know get out the the color chart and say, "Am I legal here?" So <laughs> I know the feeling. All right, Lawrence Randall, uh, come on down, as they would say, if you'd unmute yourself and say, "Hey." Ooh. <laughs> How are you guys? Can you see me okay? We see you just fine and hear you just fine. Okay, excellent. Um, I got my license, tech license last year and my general last year, so I'm relatively new. Um, and I, I kind of uh, agree with the gentleman before uh, me that indicated I'm getting tired of trying to figure out where I am with the frequency, so I think it's a good idea to get the, get the uh, advanced license and not have to uh, worry about it. So. Uh, that's, that's that's all from here. All right. Uh, and do you prefer Lawrence or Larry, or does it matter? Well, that's a good question. I, I, Larry's fine. Okay, good. Well, I'll, I'll probably switch over. <laughs> Who knows? Um, <laughs> but I appreciate it. All right, we've got two mics. Mike L., uh, you're up first, if you would. Uh, come on in and say hey. Hey, this is Mike Label. I'm also in Augusta, like one of our fellow classmates, and I saw the little blurb or advertisement in one of the local clubs and um, i've only been a ham since uh, september or august september of 2019 when the cert class offered um, uh, a volunteer instructor came in from from waynesboro or, or burke county and um, that was great i was interested you know, kind of into emergency preparedness a little bit and um, i did the general on my own i felt like the step up between technician and general was pretty significant um and then i tried to to do this on my own, the amateur, but I was really intimidated. And uh, unlike many of the people thus far, I have like no not background in anything electronic at all. I'm, I'm a philosophy major and I practice law, so I'm pretty useless in the big scheme of things. But I, I'm I'm really um, I, I am a good test taker and I like to learn. So hopefully I can make up for it. Even I have to study a little bit on my own, and I really look forward to it. And I just want to thank you for. Uh, for uh, helping us through the way. Well, absolutely, and um, our goal, our primary goal is to get you to be able to pass the test, but also our secondary goal is for you to understand, you know, why the right answer is the right answer. So if we can do those two things, uh, then uh, we'll consider ourselves successful. All right, the second mic, Mike O, uh, if you would unmute yourself and come on in and just say hello. How you doing tonight, Gary? This is Mike Odom, right outside of Nashville, Tennessee. Um, actually born in Venezuela, uh, so I'm a Carolina native. Uh, just started this year. Uh, decided January 1st to get this old brain going after retiring, and I uh, got my technician in March and got my general in July. Uh, general was thanks to you and Dave with your videos, and I'm looking forward to the new. Thanks. Uh -huh. Excellent. We always like a satisfied customer. <laughs> Remember, the classes are free, so they're probably worth what you're paying for them. All right. R.W. McManus, uh, you're next up on the list. If you would unmute yourself, please, and just uh, say hello. Yeah, I'm Robert Kilo, November 4, Kilo, Quebec, Juliet. I'm a uh, retired civil engineer, and uh, as a good civil engineer, I'm a lifelong denier of you can push an electron little wire. Uh, took shop in high school, got interested in radio and electronics a little bit, uh, but went on to bigger and better things other than sitting around. Uh, uh, about three years ago, I fell and broke my leg. Mm. 
And instead of sitting on the couch eating bonbons and watching soap operas, I decided I'd study for the exams and study for the technician and the general and passed them both about two months later, about the same time I got off of my crutches. Uh, I like HF, mainly digital, because I don't talk off a lot and uh, active in the local clubs uh, with the repeater committees and field day and those kind of things. Excellent, Robert. Appreciate it very much. Um, and uh, next up is Rachel. Come on in, please, if you'd hit uh, unmute. Hi, all. I'm, I'm Rachel. I'm a military spouse, and we're currently stationed in Fort Gordon, Georgia. So I move around a lot. That's a understatement of the century. Um, in my pastime, I'm a big cyber nerd. Um, I love everything dealing with computers and I'm a big scientist nerd so I consider myself a citizen science. I like the idea of radio astronomy and actually like using radios to get images and sight maps and weather balloons so I need this course to go further. Um, I got my technician's license September like last month. Uh, I plan to test for my general in November. Should be easy hopefully we'll see. And uh, I figured this course will get me on the right path to getting into the more advanced fields that I'm really interested in. Excellent, Rachel. Uh, and your call sign is Kilo Oscar 4 Hotel Lima Charlie. She has it uh, up on the screen there. Um, and if you look at her uh, screen, uh, it's got her first name and her call sign. Uh, and that would be helpful probably uh, to change your name uh, on the screen to that format uh, for future uh, times. Also, Rachel, you're very uh, photogenic, so I think uh, a YouTube channel might be in your future as well. So <laughs> talk to me about that sometime. All right, next up is Scott, KX4YM. Come on in. Hey, you got a long time to see. <laughs> I have living proof that your classes work. I uh, took the general with you and took the extra until COVID hit and kept going to watch your classes and tested before they changed everything. And I'm here supporting you, bud. Well, thank you, Scott. I'm glad to have you aboard again, and uh, we're going to get you to the end here. All right, Wayne Whitby uh, is up next, please, on my list. Uh, if you haven't figured it out, it's kind of alphabetical. Uh, come on in. Hey, good evening, Gary. Uh, first, I want to apologize for the darkness of the screen. I think I'm going to have to get some more light in here. Uh, but good evening, to everybody. Name here is Wayne. Call sign, if you can't tell from my background, is Kilo India 4, Uniform Yankee Alpha. I am now officially retired, living in St. Cloud, Florida. I spent 35 years with Home Depot, so I'm a retail geek, I guess. And I'm also a member of the Osceola County Aries Group down here. And I was licensed in 2007, and uh, I was studying all three classes at that time, and uh, the guys talked me into it. I passed the tech, I passed the general, but I missed the extra by about five questions. Oops. So uh, I kind of stepped away from it, and I figured eh, I better get back into it. So that's why I'm here. Great. Well, glad to have you aboard. All right, now I'm going to have a trouble with this one. We have somebody who is logged in as DTB. Uh, your audio is on a phone line, um, I guess. Can you unmute yourself? You can hit star six if you're on the phone line with your touchpad. Uh, and just say hello. No? Not sure who that is. Okay, we're going to jump. Then I have one who's just indicated as Bill. Bill? Did I miss somebody? If you haven't been up? Or is that Bill Whalen? Is that just another connection for you, Bill? All right, I think that's it. All right, 26 participants on the uh, the list. That's probably the most interesting part of the show tonight is the meeting you all. And I'm, I'm so impressed with all of you uh, and uh, the things that you have done. So let me quickly uh, zip through my little presentation here uh, to get you up to speed. Then we'll take a five minute break and then we'll have Dave Ivey come back and introduce uh, some math ideas. Uh, not to scare you away, but to, to keep you interested. So, um, uh, Doug, if you'd uh, go over to the presentation, please. So, why would you want to upgrade? Well, I heard a bunch of these um, uh, answers uh, earlier tonight. Um, one is you can get a shorter call sign, a vanity call sign. Uh, the most important to me was getting those frequencies. 
Uh, in the United States, the FCC and their incentive licensing um, gives you more frequencies the higher up you go. Um, and isn't it always the, the rare DX is always living in that extra portion of the band? Um, there's some more communications modes that you can use. Uh, there's technical opportunities, a greater understanding of radio engineering, but mainly being an extra is a lot of fun uh, and it uh, sets you up actually to give back to the hobby as well. Um, to qualify for an extra class license, you have to take elements two, the technician test, elements three, the general, and then elements four. This is how the FCC uh, uh, classifies them. I've been asked, can you take element four first? And interestingly, the answer is yes. You could take the extra class without having the other, but you don't get a license. You just get the certificate of successful completion of exam, and then you have a year to take elements three and elements two. So it doesn't make any sense. Take them in order, two, three, and four. Uh, Gary, where's element one? Oh. Element one was the Morris code test, which is no longer required uh, for any amateur radio license. Um, if you are licensed before 87, I didn't hear any about that. Um, you can get up to general. Uh, if you have an expired license, if you had a general class license or an extra class license, you can get it back just by taking the technician test. So that's kind of cool. And uh, as I said, element one is no longer required, but Morse code is very active and very much alive uh, on the amateur radio bands. So what we'll do here in the extra class, we're going to try to cover one chapter uh, over one week or two weeks. Um, chapter one is an introduction. That's what we're doing tonight. No test questions come from chapter one in the book, but it has good information, especially about how to use the book. Um, so please read chapter one. For next week, I want you to read chapter two, please, Operating Practices. Um, if you can read ahead, uh, then you're going to have a better understanding of things that we might talk about here in class. What is the key to your success? It's your motivation. How badly do you want to get an amateur radio extra class license? If you're motivated, you're going to get there, and you'll, we'll find, you'll find here in the class all of the, the tools and information necessary uh, to, success, uh, to uh, achieve success. Um, I want to thank you all uh, for uh, helping us in this the Zoom class. And then also, we are um, streaming the class live on YouTube. And it's also recorded uh, on YouTube. Uh, we're also recording it here locally um, so that um, if you miss a class, don't give up, don't stop. Just remember, you can always go to YouTube and, and, and watch it there. Um, as I mentioned, each session will be streamed and recorded. Look at this. This was my YouTube channel when we first got started, and that's the, the link. By the way, this PowerPoint presentation, uh, we want you to take notes, but you'll get copies, PDF copies. Uh, of this PowerPoint presentation. We'll send you links by email where you can download it if, if you'd like. But got started on YouTube, I can't remember, a couple years ago, three years ago, I don't know, 65 subscribers uh, at the time. Well, now it's over 8,900 subscribers today, I just checked. Um, I got to thank all of uh, you and the community, the amateur radio community, who is uh, really, um, this was just kind of something we did on the side to, to help out our local uh, class participants. And wow, it just kind of took off. So not anything we were uh, setting out to do. I also have a website. Uh, it hasn't been updated in a while. Uh, my webmaster is right over here and he's going to uh, talk to me later. <laughs> about getting it updated. Um, there is a donate button there. Uh, yeah, we do have expenses to, to uh, you know, operate the, the channel. So if anyone would consider uh, donating via PayPal, we would appreciate it. But it's not required. The classes are certainly free. So here is the class schedule. I told you I'm going to send this to you by PDF. So don't worry that you can't see it. It's really small print. Um, but we'll be uh, covering the various chapters in, in the class, uh, sometimes alternating uh, between uh, Dave and myself. Uh, we will be taking a Christmas break uh, in December, uh, and we're, we still have to work this out because there's some possible travel uh, that I will be doing or Dave will be doing. We're trying to coordinate that out. The whole point is that we're trying to target February. 
February of 2021 uh, for you to have seen all of the test questions uh, and, and know what the answers are and why they're the right answers uh, so that you'd be able to test for your extra in, in February. Now, of course, you can test anytime you want before February, so, uh, and we would recommend that. So where can you go to test? Well, hopefully in your local area or there are some online ham radio testing opportunities. And I've got three slides here to tell you about. Here's the Greater Los Angeles Amateur Radio Group. Uh, and there's a web uh, link there down below the URL. And uh, so you'll get this in PDF and you'll be able to go take a look. You can book a session with them to actually take your extra test online. Uh, a second one is the New England Amateur Radio. Uh, group, uh, they also uh, will uh, give online exams. And finally, one that's kind of famous is the Anchorage, Alaska VEC. I think they were one of the first uh, to do online exams. Charlie, looks like you got a question. You got your hand up, so go ahead and unmute. What's the question? I think uh, if you go to hamstudy.org, they've got a complete calendar and listing of. Uh, testing sites that would come up differently almost every day of the week. Excellent. Thank you for that information. And I was uh, also going to um, uh, come back to me if you would, uh, Doug. Um, I was going to mention that uh, also local ham clubs, uh, and we're going to show you how to find a local ham club if you don't already know about that. Um, they also may be doing testing uh, here in Greenville, South Carolina. The West Carolina Amateur Radio Service uh, is still giving uh, in-person tests the third Saturday of the month. Uh, and uh, so uh, there, there may be that same kind of opportunity uh, to you there. All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Um, uh, what is the, you know, things, what are, what are we going to be looking at? We're going to be looking at a question pool uh, of 620 questions. We'll cover them all here uh, online in the, in the class. The test you will take will be 50 of those. Uh, and you need to get 37 of the 50 right in order to pass. We're going to provide you with the PBS, uh, PDFs, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm getting tired, I guess. Uh, we'll give you PDFs by email or links to them uh, with uh, our presentations, the PowerPoint presentations, and also something I call the Right Answers Study Guide, which gives you the test question and just the right answer for the questions that we cover in that chapter. So some people uh, like this kind of rote memorization or you know, response, uh, so we'll provide that for you as well. And as we mentioned, we're targeting February uh, to take the test. Um, you will be uh, needing to use a scientific calculator for some of the math. Dave's going to talk more about it. Uh, this is the one that we recommend. He'll tell you more details. Uh, but really, what Dave is going to tell you is that math is no big thing. Um, and uh, I won't spoil it. We would like you to sign up at the American Radio Relay League Exam Review website. The link there is there. Uh, it's arrlexamreview.appspot.com. Um, they provide a really good um, way to study. You can actually study chapter by chapter. You can re review the questions. So as we go along chapter by chapter, it, it's the perfect mate uh, to what we're uh, going to be uh, talking about. You can use other uh, um, um, means of studying as well. Uh, there are apps for your phone. Um, there are other video channels, lots of them on YouTube about ham radio. We recommend David uh, Kassler, K-E-0-O-G. Uh, he's the grandfather in ham radio education. Uh, Dave uh, has uh, videos for each chapter in the American Radio Relay League license manual. So again, chapter by chapter, we'll be sending you links to all of Dave's videos so you can watch them before you come to class. Uh, gives you just another bite at the apple, uh, another way uh, to uh, study the material. Again, PDFs coming your way. Um, Send us emails if you've got questions uh, or uh, email one of your uh, classmates. Um, work together. Um, you can be a learning team. We're the teaching team, uh, but you all are the learning team. So uh, work together. Um, we may have some in-class tests or quizzes. Probably not. Um, 
if you know some information like Charlie just shared, um, uh, share your experience with the class. You're, you're seasoned. Uh, uh, many of you have been in amateur radio as long or longer than I have. So, uh, And remember that a ham radio license is a license to learn. So the real learning is going to happen after you get the license and after you get on the air. Uh, and we always uh, recommend joining a local ham club, one that matches your interests. Uh, you can uh, give, them, uh, give a presentation to them or uh, uh, learn from them. And here uh, at the American Radio Relay League Find a Club page, you can put in your zip code uh, and uh, search for ham clubs that are in your area that are affiliated with the ARRL uh, and um, maybe make some new friends, find some testing opportunities, uh, and uh, maybe tell them about our channel. Uh, we'd appreciate that as well. Just by quick comparison here, because uh, it's 7-Eleven, we want to make sure we can take a break. I mentioned that in the United States, uh, the um, frequencies are given the higher you go up uh, with license class. In England, it's power. Uh, they give you most all of the frequencies at the foundation license, but you only can operate at 10 watts. The intermediate license gives you all the rest of the frequencies, and you can operate up to 50 watts. The advanced license, you can operate all the way up to 400 watts. That's the maximum legal limit in Great Britain, 400 watts. Um, they uh, have a 21-week course uh, that I, I looked at online, which was comparable to what we're doing. Um, and they have... Their test, remember ours is 50 questions, there you have 62 multiple choice questions that you have to answer, and there's a two hour time limit. Uh, as far as I know in the United States, there is no time limit. So my point is, we have it easy. Well, think about that anyway, maybe. <laughs> have fun, learn something, and share what you're, you've learned. That's what we're all about. And here is where I was going to promote Hamcation 2021 in Orlando, Florida, one of the great ham uh, fests of, uh, of all time, especially in the southeast. And I learned just this morning from my friend Matt, NU4E, it's been postponed till next year. Uh, that's canceling to me, but anyway. <laughs> so, no hamcation this year, sorry, but you can go to their website and find out more information about it. Uh, it's a, a really an, a nice ham fest. So, everybody take a breath, take five minutes. Um, we're going to uh, have a potty break, uh, move uh, Dave in here, and thank you very much for your attention so far. So, um, if you would take the uh, tablet, uh, yes indeed, and we're going to give you a countdown timer, five minutes. See you in a little bit.
open. All right, so we're, are we on the air here? You're good. Okay. Um, and do we see this on the screen, Gary? Or do I have to share something? No. So is this going out? Yep. What's on my screen? Okay. Since uh, the I'm going to be talking about math, and the purpose of the sessions that I'll be doing over the next uh, couple of weeks, I uh, want to kind of get us prepped for Chapter 4. Has anybody looked at Chapter 4 yet? Just to kind of wave if you have. Okay. Um, and you showed up anyway. Okay. Chapter 4 is really terrifying <laughs> for a lot of people. And uh, we're, we're going to give you some background to get us ready for that and introduce the calculator. And um, uh, hopefully we'll have you conversant using the calculator prior to us getting to the chapter so we won't have to struggle with it too much. I've got some mystery numbers on the screen right now. And I'd just like to uh, ask if anybody has a clue what, what some of these mean. Uh, now, Gary already talked about the number 620. Anybody remember what that, that is? Number of questions. Yep, that's the number of pool questions. Pool questions. All right, uh, the number 10, does that ring any bells yet? Sections. It's the uh, subsections uh, in the uh, test pool. It's also the number of chapters in our, in our book. Mm -hmm. Okay, chapters and subsections. 50. Gary also mentioned that number. Amount of questions. That's the number of questions. And then we've got 37 and 13. What do you suppose that means? How many right? Right? Right. 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 You're wrong. Exactly. It works out to 74 percent, mm -hmm. which um, seems kind of generous, but um, that's you, you, you can miss 13 questions and still come up with a 37 that you'll need to pass. So. Uh, that's that's there. And then the last number uh, might take some thought, 90% plus. Any guesses what that number might mean? How many people pass who take your class? Wow, you're pretty good, Bill. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Now, our, our numbers went down a little bit when COVID hit because we were in the middle of a, of a class at that time. But uh, those who are willing to do the work um, typically pass. And on the, on the first try. Pass, and this is your probability. So that, that's good. You did real good with, real well with the, with the guessing game. Okay, what I'm going to move into next is the slide presentation on math and, and learning. And we're going to do this in two parts. I'm going to do the first part tonight, and the second part we're going to do after Gary's presentation next week, just so you know what's going on. So let me bring up the presentation. We'll kind of talk through this. I like to put my uh, contact information up, and I, I do get phone calls and emails from people, and we're, we're happy to, um, to take those, and my cell phone as, as well. Uh, it kind of gives me a little difficulty because uh, you all know how the spammers are. <laughs> Usually when I get uh, students calling me, I, I don't know who they are. So, But I do answer the phone most of the time. So extra class math questions. Believe it or not, it's not quite as bad as you, you might think. You know, that, that's really the case. And I'm going to be demonstrating that here in a bit. I'm going to grab a book. Actually, two books. I think most of you have uh, already got this, which is great. So if you would turn to page 1-13, that'll explain this maybe a little bit better. So if you get to page 1-13, it looks something like this. This covers the what they call the syllabus. It's um, everything that's in the, uh, in the question pool. And I put together a, a chart here that I've got on the screen right now, pool question breakout. And you'll notice that there's E1 through E10 that goes across the top. Let me turn my laser pointer on here. E1 through E10 going across the top. And those are explained starting on page 1-13 uh, in the book. And then we have groups coming down the side or coming underneath each, each of those. 
and most of the math questions are in E5. I'm going to advance here. And E5, sub-element E5 is electrical principles. And these are the four groups that are there. Now what I did here, and the purpose of, the reason I'm going through this is to show you that math is not a big, as big a deal as some people make it out to be. Um, so with, within section E5, or within group E5A, there's 16 questions in the group, and only four of them are related to something you might need to calculate. And it goes right on down the line here. You'll see that there's many more questions in the group than there are math questions possible. I'm going to flip back here now. There's 50 groups in total. And the way that the test works is that you will get one and only one question from each one of these groups. So there's 50 groups listed here covering all of the knowledge in the test. You're only going to see the possibility of a math question from these four, E5, A, B, C, and D. And you'll notice that there's only 25% of the questions in that group that are related to math. So looking at this, and I've actually seen this, I haven't looked at the, I'm, I'm a volunteer examiner as well, so I'm interested to kind of look at, look at the tests that are out there. But before the pool changed, I did, and there was one test that I found that had zero math questions in it because you can see that the probabilities are, they get smaller and smaller. You could have a maximum of four questions on math related to chapter four, but the probability is no more than two. And from our mystery numbers list, you can see, you, remember we said that you could miss 13. So an attitude that you could take, and I hope nobody takes this attitude, but you could say, I'm terrible at math, I don't want to learn math, I'm going to ignore the math. Well, guess what? There's Going to, you're not going to probably see any more than two questions on the test. Uh, however, we are going to go through how to work the questions. Uh, it's very useful in your future ham radio career, but if there's anybody that, that's terrified <laughs> at this point, especially after looking at chapter four, uh, I'm here to tell you that it's not as bad as it looks. So I, I hope that that's reassuring to, to anybody that might be in that situation. So what are our learning objectives? Um, we want you to have the confidence to pass the, pass the math questions on the exam. And in addition to the fact that there aren't as many as you might think, um, some of the math questions require no calculation whatsoever. I'm going to be sharing estimation techniques as we go through chapter four when we get there and uh, give you some tips and tricks that you can use to uh, make it not necessary to even have a calculator. Some, some extras don't even bring a calculator to the exam. But um, I, I'm, I very much want for you to know how to do these, so we will touch on them as we go through Chapter 4. Now, personal growth and insight and, and context. It's been said that no learning happens unless you have some context to hook it to. You have to relate things that are new to you to things that you already know, and we're going to be sending a lot of new information to you through this, the, through this class. So uh, we're going to provide as much context as we can related to things that you may already know. And then finally, calculation and estimation tools. Um, in some cases, the calculator is going to be ha handy. Uh, in other cases, it's just as easy to estimate the answer from the question the way that it's, the way that it's given. And I lost my bottle of water here. I don't know where it went. <clears throat> okay. I feel my voice starting to get a little, little scratchy. So, some assumptions about you. Notice the picture of the, of this poor ant here. Poor thing. So, math may have discouraged you from taking the extra exam sooner. And the study guide questions can be perceived as intimidating. In, anybody feel that way? No, you're all excited. Oh, I see at least some nodding heads. That's a good thing. We're assuming that you're not an electrical engineer. Not only are we assuming that you are not an electrical engineer, but we're assuming that you don't want to become one. So that's, that's a good thing. 
Um, we also assume that you may have been, or you, you were exposed to algebra at some time. Maybe it goes back to high school, maybe it's 100 years ago. Uh, but it, at least you've seen formulas written and, and equations, and, and hopefully that's true for, for most of you. Um, so the, the funny e equation that's on the chart there is actually an, uh, an equation for an ellipse, which we will not be touching. I just wanted to demonstrate you're not going to have to do anything like that. And we're making the assumption that you're motivated to pass the extra exam. The comments that you made as we were going through the introductions were, were very encouraging. Uh, you're all here because you're, you're, up, you're up for the challenge. And as Gary said, your current license is a license to learn. And uh, we, we're assuming that you're open to try new approaches to learning. I'm going to have an extremely interesting session next week uh, about ways that you can learn. Uh, and I, I, I think you'll really enjoy that. We're going to touch on it a little bit tonight. So those are the assumptions about you. Good news. The sign up there says keep calm. There's good news. There is a lot more in the license manual than you need for the exam. In fact, I think there's three sections in Chapter 4, and there's no test questions at all for the first two sections. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff in there, a lot, lot of math. So uh, we'll, we'll be pointing that out as we go. You, um, there, there's, when I was taking my extra, <laughs> um, I didn't know all of this. And I thought that I needed to know everything that was in the license manual. So I literally went through every single problem that was there and, and worked them all. And only when we began teaching this class did I realize, good grief, that there's way more in the book than what you need to, to answer the test questions. So we'll be focusing on that to help shield you from some of the stuff you really don't need. Um, I'd be thrilled if, if you wanted to go through it all, but there aren't very many people that, that feel that way. So we already said there'd be a maximum of four questions related to math on electrical principles. There are a few um, calculations sprinkled through the rest of the chapters, but they're pretty easy, um, very, very easy to do. The, the scary one is chapter four. More good news, formulas are plug and play. So when you see what the formula looks like, you just plug the values in. You don't have to do any algebraic manipulation of the formulas to solve for a, for a value. Um, there, and we've, we've put all of the formulas on, on one page that we're going to be supplying to you. In, I'm saying some cases a calculator is not needed. Actually, in most of the cases, you can either with estimation techniques or some tricks and tips that I'll, I'll give you um, not have to go through the calculation process. But I really would like you to know how, so we will touch on that. Now, the TI-36X Pro, um, be, and this is one of the reasons that we recommend it. It pretty much eliminates the need for trig. When we get into power factor, I think there's one or two questions that, that ask for a phase angle, um, or the, they ask for a power factor, and the answer is the cosine of, of, uh, of, of the value. That, that's an extremely easy one. But if you look in chapter four, there's all kinds of stuff relating to rectangular to polar con conversions and backwards. And the traditional way to do that has been with uh, using trig. We won't need to do any of that because of some of the features that are in this calculator. Couple of <clears throat> excuse me, a couple of comments on different kinds of learning preferences. Um, and I'd just like to run through this quick. We'll be talking a lot more about learning principles of learning, or science of learning next week. But there's, there's several kinds of folks here. We've got visual learners. Visual guides and models show me that that's what my uh, that's how my wife likes to learn. If if somebody can sit down with a piece of paper, or blackboard, walk through it with her, um, she's fine. So as we're doing this, uh, try to put yourself in some of these situations, and we want to figure out what kind of a learning preference you have. Auditory. This is oral communications and written language. Just give me a book. That's kind of where I am. If, if, if I can find a good book on a subject, I'm going to figure it out. I'm, it, it, I'm going to get it. Um, but that's just me. And then kinesthetic, that's a big, long word. And that just means learn by doing. So you actually have to get your fingers in and, and work through something. Uh, nothing on the test on any of this stuff. Just 
Uh, we need to understand how we learn and how we can optimize our learning to get through this, uh, through this material. So my question is, what kind of a learner are you? So I'll, I'll just have people kind of raise their hands. Do you, and you can be in more than one category. How many people think, uh, well, consider themselves a visual learner? Got a couple, okay, very good, very good. How about auditory? Give, give me a book and I'll figure it out. A couple of people, okay. And um, kinesthetic, you, you learn best if you're actually working with the stuff. All right, good, we got a good, we got a good mix. Um, some good news, we're going to be touching um, all of those areas as we go through this, this course. So um, you're gonna be okay. So the success plan, we are going to be laser focused on the questions that are in the exam. We don't just, uh, we also provide some background and context so that the questions make sense. You'll, we want you to come away knowing why the right answer is the right answer. That's also a, a learning, there's a learning advantage there too, because if you can connect things to some context, uh, you'll remember it better and you all will have a ham radio career beyond getting your license. And much of this material is very useful for that. We want you to understand how to work the formulas. Uh, in practice, if you were going to try to find out which value of inductor or capacitor you've got to use in a circuit, you'd probably grab the ARRL handbook and look, look it up and go from there. But there are a limited number of uh, questions in the question pool that uh, required the use of formulas and uh, we'll focus on those uh, fairly intensely. And we will touch on all of the exam pool questions. I think there's only about 16 or 18 possible math questions uh, from chapter four uh, and a lot of theory questions. Now what is our tool set? We've got the license manual, which you all have, I believe, the calculator and the, an extra class reference sheet. Uh, this is something that we'll be supplying to you. It has got all of the formulas and some things you want to remember uh, on, on one piece of paper. So you don't have to, there, somebody's holding one up, Calvin is. Yep, that's probably the one from the last class. Gary sent it to us in our email. That's right, I, I did see that email this afternoon. Yep, so and something called a growth mindset. I don't know if you've ever heard of, the, of a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset, but a growth, the concept of a growth mindset is that um, you're, you have a willingness to learn new things uh, and you believe that, that, that you can, as versus a fixed mindset. Folks with a fixed mindset think that they have all of the smarts they're ever gonna have uh, if they're good at something, it's because of their natural talents and they can never become any better than that as versus a growth mindset with, that says, I, I can be better than I am right now and I'm willing to try and I'm, I'm not embarrassed if I don't know something. Um, and I, I believe that I, I can change my, intel, my level of intelligence, I can change my level of knowledge and, um, and, and do well in something that I really put my mind to. So we're, we're uh, hoping and expecting that everybody has a growth mindset that's that's going into this uh, this class. A concept um, that I learned as I was studying for my project management professional exam years ago, um, I had an instructor that was really big on memory dump sheets. Now, just to share the concept with you, because it would be useful for the amateur extra exam, you create it. Uh, make it no longer than one page so that you can easily remember it and then uh, just put down facts and formulas that you're having trouble remembering and then, then commit those things to memory. And then practice reproducing the dump sheet on your own without, without any help. So it, it might be the formula for capacitive reactants, for example, or some of the formulas that are gonna be on our reference sheet or a fact that you easily forget. So put that all on, on one sheet, it's unique to you. And then when you go to take the exam, you can use the back page of your answer sheet for scratch paper um, before you even start the exam. If you wanna take this approach, write out your memory dump sheet so that um, it'll, it'll be there for you. Some people, when they take a test, their mind completely turns to mush <laughs> when they get to the first, first question on the test. 
and uh, this is one way to, to minimize that. So it, it's a concept, it, it's optional, but it is very effective for those that have used it. A few comments about the calculator. As I said before, it takes a lot of the pain out of working the formulas. It has an entry system so that uh, whatever the formula may be, it will actually look that way when you put it into the calculator. And, and we'll show you examples um, that, that, that match that. It doesn't cost much, about 20 bucks. It's always been available at Staples and Amazon. Um, and we, we highly recommend this specific calculator. We're going to be doing demonstrations and examples in class for some of the questions in Chapter 4. And, and we'll be doing those examples on this calculator. So if you want to follow along step by step, it would be very helpful if you have this model. And, uh, and this is going to vary. Now I, I realize that we've got people from different parts of the country um, sitting in here on our, on our class. Most uh, volunteer examiner groups, or VECs, take the position that you can use a scientific calculator during your exam, but not one that's programmable. So no graphing calculators, so that they don't want you to store formulas. It is possible that um, during your test session, the volunteer examiner uh, person in charge may say, reset your calculator. I want to make sure there's, there's no formulas in it. But the, this particular calculator doesn't, do, uh, doesn't have memory in it like that, so it's, it's, it's generally available are generally usable. I did hear of one uh, volunteer examiner group that wouldn't let, allow their students to use anything other than a four-function calculator, which is really insane. <laughs> but um, check with the organization you're testing with just, just to be sure that you're, you're okay on that. Uh, the Westcars uh, VEC, which I'm a part of, uh, will, is pretty liberal. Some people have asked, can I use my cell phone? They've said, uh, Dave, did you know that there's a scientific calculator on your cell phone? Well, yes, but generally speaking, you're not allowed to use a cell phone during the exam because they don't want you calling a friend <laughs> or, or, or whatever. Um, so just, just be aware of that. And because of the kinds time constraints in our, in our class, we really won't have time to figure out uh, people's calculators that, that don't match this. I'm, I'm happy to help somebody offline if, if you want to use something else, but um, uh, we won't have time to, to figure that all out during, during class. So that's why we recommend this specific calculator. And part two we're going to do next week, learning and study tips for passing your extra exam on the first try. And there's a lot of really, really interesting things in, in this section. Um, I'll be showing you a terrifying slide that shows how fast we forget things once we learn them and some strategies for uh, combating that, uh, that effect. Something like 20% of what you learn that's new to you will be gone within 24 hours unless you do something about it. And I'm going to share some strategies for you to do exactly that. Not forget, but to remember. So that's the conclusion of my math intro, and we're going to pick that up and run further with it next week. Gary's going to be doing a presentation on Chapter 2. There are test questions in Chapter 2. Then when he's finished, I'll be picking up um, on that section. We'll do a little bit more with the calculator as well. So that concludes it, unless there's any questions. Anything from Gary? I just want to say thank you so much for everyone who's participated with us tonight. Thank you to all of those who are watching on the YouTube live stream. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, we'll conclude for tonight. And uh, look forward to seeing you next week, uh, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Thanks so much, and 73. Good.